Let's talk about getting clients and specifically the mindset that we use when we talk to potential clients. So the reality is that if you want to get a lot of clients or enough clients, you need to talk to a lot of people. Now, when I say talk to people, I don't mean necessarily uh, face-to-face, although I think that's always um, a more powerful way of doing it. And when I say face-to-face, it could be via Zoom as well these days, obviously, or video chat. Uh, But the the talking can also happen through email, through social media messaging, et cetera. But again, the fact is, if you want to get enough clients, you need to talk to a lot of people, right? Now, you may have heard uh, sales training that says that selling is a numbers game. Now, do I agree with that? Yes and no. I think that it's true that if you want, let's say if you want 10 clients, you may need to talk with 15, 20, even 100 people, depending on the kinds of people you're talking to, whether they're a really good fit for what you offer, whether, um, you know, uh, how you show up in those conversations, uh, the timing that uh, for for them in their lives, et cetera, lots of factors, but you have to talk to a lot of people to even get 10 clients. That's the, that's the reality of it. So I do agree with that part of the numbers game is that the, you have to talk to a lot of people. What I don't agree with, and in fact, there's a lot of sales training that says every no that you get from somebody, if you pitch them, say, hey, would you become my client? They say no. Every no that you get means you're closer to one yes. You may or may not have heard that, but that's very common sales training. And I, that is technically true. <laughs> that every no you get, you, you're technically closer to some yes in the future. But it is such, it is such, a, it's such a, um, a brutal process to think about having to pitch your services to 100 people to get 10 clients or 20 clients, or if you're a really good salesperson, 50 clients, 70 clients, 80 clients, I don't know what your numbers are. But still, the process of thinking, I'm going to be selling to a lot of people, and I'm going to get a lot of rejections, but every rejection is closer to one acceptance, is who wants to do that? Except for maybe there are some, (laughs) you know, sales warriors out there. Um, who just love going into battle and, and getting the rejections and, you know, that might, might really, you know, uplift some people. But for most of us who are heart-based, who are more sensitive to others' reactions, uh, more sensitive to energy, um, we're not looking forward to the next rejection, which brings us closer to a, to a yes. We, we don't want any rejection, obviously. Um, few people do. There are, of course, trainings out there that teach you to love rejection. And I, I, I mean, I get what they're trying to do. But to me, it's a little bit like teaching you how to be a little bit psychopathic. Um, it's teaching you how to uh, not care about social relations because the way that we evolved as human beings, and I think the way that we are in the eternal life of the soul, soul connections, is that we want to connect lovingly with each other. We, we, we don't want to connect like robots transactionally saying, will you buy from me? No, thank you. Next person, will you buy from, you know, we don't, we don't, we're not, that's not how, that's not authentic to most of us, right? That's really what it is. So yes, sales is a numbers game. You need to talk to a lot of people to get enough clients, but how we talk to those people will make all the difference in for our hearts, for our um, desire to keep going or not. Because if you just try to force yourself to love rejection, right, and to appreciate rejection, again, I don't think that's authentic for the evolution of the human spirit. Um, But instead, let me give you an alternative. 
Yes, you need to talk to a lot of people to get enough clients. But what if instead of talking to people with the agenda in mind that, my God, every client, I, every person I talk to, I'm going to try to make them a client. I'm going to try to make them a client. I'm going to see if they, they're, they're, they're one of my clients. And if so, then they're useful to me. If they're not a client, then they're not useful to me or they're, you know, I'm going to you know, move on kind of thing. Instead of having that agenda of selling to everybody, what if our agenda is to understand and to help more people? Wow. So if that's the case, we are still going to talk to a lot of people, but we're going to talk to everybody from the mode of how can I better understand what you are going through? And if what you are going through has an alignment, if what you're going through has some problems, challenges, or yearnings and goals that align with the kind of thing that I love to do to help people, then there's a natural enthusiasm to say, oh my gosh, that is something I love helping people with. If you have any questions, I can answer it. But anyway, let me give you a resource or two or something like that. Do you see what I mean? So if we are just, we're still talking to a lot of people. And again, I, when I say talking, I mean either through a Zoom call or through email or social media message. We're still talking to a lot of people, but our our mode when we when we're when we're faced with each soul, each person, each human being, is to say how, what can I learn about this human being, and what they are going through, especially in terms of challenges, um, problems, uh, you know, urgent goals that they have right now, um, what they are really passionate about that they're seeking some additional resources for. How can I understand what this person wants and needs right now? And if I can understand, and in a conversation, right? I mean, gosh, I, I have, you know, so, so I, I'm very interested in, in, in sales, particularly authentic selling, because, you know, that's what I've been coaching people on for 12 years among other things, authentic selling is one, or selling I've been coaching people on for 12 years and authentic selling more like the last seven, uh, seven, eight years. So I, of course, being so interested in selling have been a potential client for other people because I wanna see how they sell to me because I actually might wanna buy their service, but I was also very curious how they would sell to me. So. I purposely put myself into some sales conversation as a potential client. Like I said, I might have bought their thing. I was actually interested, but I want to also see how they did it. So, and it's so surprising to me because I purposely have been a potential client for several sales experts. So let me say that again. I went into the conversation with several people whose expertise who builds themselves out as I am a sales leader, I'm a sales expert, and I, and I help people sell better, sell more. Okay, so I'm like, wow, okay, I want to I wanna know how you sell to me. So I went into those conversations as a potential client. And every single one of them was surprisingly disappointing. Every single one of them was like this. I could tell from the beginning that they had some kind of script that they were trying to move me through. And I, I, I'm surprised because as a sales expert myself, I have, I guess I guess I could say I've evolved beyond scripts. I mean, I understand. I mean, I I don't even recommend sales scripts anymore. I don't recommend that you have you have like a like a paper in front of you and make sure you like cover everything. I mean Basically, let me, let me tell you what you should cover in a sales conversation, okay? Let me, <laughs> let me just give you my 12 years of experience doing this. I used to think that you should cover, make sure they tell you their problems so that you can emphasize, wow, that's painful, isn't it? This is the traditional sales you know, script. What are their problems and their goals? And help them emphasize, wow, that's painful, isn't it? Or wow, that's an exciting goal, isn't it? Isn't that really important to you? How important to you is it? You know, you kind of like, you kind of find out their problem or their goal, and then you 
you help them to decide how important it is really to them. And therefore, if it's that important, then they must need resources and support in doing it. And then you pump yourself up to say, well, you know, good thing is I've helped a lot of people do this kind of thing. I have this certification or I have these experiences and you know, kind of pump yourself up a little bit here or give testimonials or case studies of how you've helped other people. You know, sometimes you, you do it subtly, sometimes you do it directly, whatever. And then you finally go, you know, um, if you uh, sign up today, if you buy from me in the next 48 hours, I'll throw in this bonus. I'll give you this discount. I will give you this additional, uh, you know, um, benefit that, that, you know, usually I don't give most people. So that's the traditional sales script. Now there's other nuances in it, but here's what I tell you now. Here's the authentic sales script, okay? Part number one, you come to the conversation having first done an energy, energy reboot, however you do it. If you wanna learn what my energy reboot is, go to Google and search energy reboot. Thankfully, Google knows my energy reboot and we'll show you my video and you can learn, but do whatever you need to do first before you come to the conversation with a connection to your divine source, if I may say, but the connection to your deepest source, your most eternal source of love, acceptance, security. In other words, you come to the call not needing anything from the other person. No need. Say that with me. No need. It, it's mind-blowing, right? What a, what, a, what a paradigm shift. Because just about every sales calls I went to, I felt like the person needed me to say yes and sign up for their thing. And if you first, like I said, authentic sales script part one is to first do your energy reboot. And my energy reboot takes me 30 seconds. Now, I don't know how long yours takes you, but it should be quick. Otherwise, you won't do it consistently. So do the energy reboot first. Come to the sales call with no need. That's part one. And then sales script, authentic sales script part two is you are just there to say, this is a precious human being who is going through battles that I can't even imagine. They deserve kindness, unconditional support and listening. When I say uncon unconditional support, I don't mean you should give them all your services and products for free. That's not what I mean. I mean unconditional support in your presence on that call. That you should approach it with saying, this is a soul, an eternal soul that I'm, I'm help holding the space for right now, who in this human incarnation, in this human life is going through a lot. This human life is not easy. And there are battles they're going through that I don't know about. I'm not privy to. So they might not be in the best mood today, or they might be, I don't know, but let me show up with as much unconditional listening and uh, support in this call as I can. That's sales script number two, part two. Okay, one is energy reboot, two is unconditional supportive energy. Okay, and three, part three is, am I, can I find out in this short time in the first, I'm going to say this, in the first two-thirds of the call, okay, in the first two-thirds of the, of the time you spend with them, your purpose is to understand what it is they are going through that energizes them right now. What problems that, they're, that are keeping them up at night, you may have heard that phrase, and it, why is it keeping them up at night? Or they wake up in the middle of night thinking about something. Well, it's because it's energizing to them right now. What problems or what yearnings are energizing for them right now? And whatever, if, and of course, if you come to that conversation, if they, if they are in conversation with you, they're probably interested in what you do to some extent. There's some interest or understanding of what you do. They don't just randomly, you know. They, so there's some understanding of what you do. So the things they share with you are probably going to be, some of it's going to be related to what you do. But some of it's not going to be. But again, your purpose is to understand what's, what's 
keeping them up at night or what's energizing them right now. Now, if you do hear, so that's part three, is to understand what ener pro problems or goals that energize them right now. Problems or goals that energize, okay? Part four is this. Part four is, are you, is anything they are saying something you have a resource for? And when I say a resource, I mean, oh, you know what? There is somebody I know who can help. There is a blog post or an article I read the other day, or this video I watched, there was a book that I could recommend. Is there a resource? And I would say a book is a little bit like too big of a resource to recommend. So this, is, this part is also something you can recommend that isn't too overwhelming or like they're probably not going to do something about it, but something they're gonna, if you have like, a, like an article, like, oh, there's an article I, I've read or I've written um, that I think is helpful for you on this. Um, something digestible. So that's, that's part four, digestible resource. Digestible resource that you have for them. Okay, so really in the first two thirds of your call, you are seeking to understand what goals and motiv goals, what motivates them essentially right now. And then also, if it's appropriate, if it feels appropriate to recommend a digestible resource for them. Now, the, 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 the nuance and the skill to develop is you're not trying to give them 10, 15, 20, maybe not even five resources because you don't wanna, the skill to develop is to be helpful without overwhelming them and say, oh my God, I've got homework for the rest of my life now. <laughs> you know, but just if you could, the digestible resource, I didn't say it's a digestible resource is, digestible resource, like here's one resource, maybe two that I'm gonna leave you with that I think is helpful. So the first two thirds or even three quarters of the call or the, the, the conversation you have, whether it's a call or it's a messaging conversation or email thread. So the first two, the majority essentially of the conversation is, is there for the purpose of understanding what's motivating them right now and, and trying to see if there is one digestible resource you, you might offer them. Finally, part five of the sales, authentic sales conversation, script part five, if there's such a thing as a script, I'm not giving you exact words to say, right? I'm giving you kind of general concepts that you will put into your own words and your own presence. But part five is to, to end the conversation. But how do we end the conversation? If they have been sharing with you problems or goals that motivate them right now that you happen to love help, helping people with, especially with your service or your product, then part five is you should mention, you should at least mention that. So that do your business some justice and do them some justice by mentioning that, by the way, what you've been talking about, the, the problem that you've been talk, we've been talking about or the goal that we've been talking about, that's actually something I love helping clients with. But I don't want to, this is, I'm not sure, you know, I, I, just, I just want to mention that to you. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'm happy to answer them. Do you see how gentle and, but clear that is? What you're talking about, that happens to be something I love helping clients with. So if you have any questions, let me know. Now, they might start asking you questions like, well, how do I solve this problem? How do I solve that problem? You say, you know what? Let me give you one, one digestible resource. That's kind of a weird term, but let me give you one simple resource on this. And if you want more, I could, uh, you know, if you have any questions about how I can help you as a client, we'd be happy to talk about this. But otherwise, let me just, let, let's just leave you with that one resource and then you can ask me any other questions. Now, of course, if the conversation keeps going and they just keep on asking for more resources, more resources, more resources, you can always come back and say, here's another digestible resource. And if you like, we can talk about how, if it makes sense to you, if, it, if it's a good fit, if it feels like, if it feels right to you, um, and by the way, if it, if it also feels right to you, the business owner, you can say, you know, I would, I would be grateful to have you as a client if it's the right, if it feels like the right time right now to do so. I'd be happy to answer questions about that. But if they, you know, in the rare case 
that they just keep coming back for, for more free, free resources from you, free resources from you, and you've run out of free resources to give, then it's time to re refer them to somebody else if they're not interested in hiring you, right? If, the, if you keep saying, hey, I'd love to answer any questions about my services if you're interested, and they keep not being interested, then it's time to refer them out. But usually in this arc of a conversation and a relationship, you've already come across as being as, as so different than the, uh, the, the other type of people, the, the other people they're talking to. You've come across as somebody who's actually given them the perhaps the greatest gift a human being can give another in conversation, which is unconditional supportive presence. You've given that to them. Of course, they're going to, if they're going to rehire anybody, it's probably going to be you, right? So th that's why it's, it's likely that it, it goes in that direction. But still, remember to come back to first do your energy reboot, provide unconditional loving presence, try to understand what motivates them right now, give a digestible resource. And then if it feels appropriate, say, I'd love to have you as a client. If, if you are really excited, if that's really true. So I hope this is helpful. And uh, if you do this, it's like you'll still have conversations with 100 people, but it's going to be so much more enjoyable, human, authentic, and not surprisingly, it might actually be more successful getting clients. But we leave that as an organic result of being a good human being to the other person. I hope this helps. Always open to your questions and your comments below. And I wish you well. Take care.